facing that problem of okay, this is your last bullet for the company. Well, lockdown has stopped play, hasn't it, for a couple of weeks, but I do have something of an exclusive, certainly to this channel, if not YouTube. It's a chat with Mr. Pinky Lai, the designer of the Porsche 996. Our chat was recorded via Zoom, and whilst the quality isn't too bad for something that was recorded over the internet, you do have to bear with it in places, just in terms of quality. However, most of what was said in the chat is absolutely fascinating, so I've let this video run a lot longer than the nine minutes, 11 seconds I usually do. It's a fascinating conversation. Here it is. Amazing. Hello, Pinky. Hi, Lee. How are you doing? You okay? Great. Uh, nothing much happening here, you know, during the lockdown everywhere. First of all, Pinky, it's, it's great to have you here on the, on the channel of That 911 Guy. Really, you are the 911 Guy because if it wasn't for you, absolutely everybody on this planet that drives water-cooled 911s, they wouldn't be in that car if it wasn't for you in, uh, in saving Porsche's 911 with that 996. Well, we have to talk about 996 because uh, I have to be careful. Uh, if, I, if I call it a 911, especially uh, in this eight, eight day and age uh, of, uh, of Volkswagen, Porsche, belongs a little bit to a different size category, okay? <laughs> I guess people who who uh, understands um, the 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 size at least at least the size of the nine nine eleven the old nine eleven moving to uh, nine ninety six and then moving to nine ninety one or nine ninety two they will understand what we are talking about about in terms of size I'm not talking about the DNA I'm not talking about the the design. What I've discovered on my ventures and chatting to enthusiasts that also own 996 is, if you park a 996 next to a 992, the 996 is tiny in proportion and it, it just, it really kind of enhances that classic look, right. classic vibe of the car. Right. I mean, obviously you, you designed the car from new. Is it weird now to discuss the 996 as a classic? Um, I, would, I would dare to say, Anything, um, anything, what a cool 911. The 996 is the only one that capture most of the 911 philosophy the, or, or the classic philosophy, the, 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 the very, very uh, original uh, uh, flavor of what a 911 is about. It's not, it's not about, you know, uh, putting a big engine, big car, or, or, or anything big. It has to be really stay small, uh, whatever you, you like to define what is small. Uh, it's not only the engine, small engine, but also a small body. So what was it like designing a 911 then, Pinky? It's almost outrageous experience. You know, a lot of uh, really, really, you know, sort of, 24 hours sometimes. It's, it's like I, I was the one who turned off the studio light, you know, one o'clock in the morning, and then the one who switched on the light, you know, six o'clock, half past six, or seven o'clock. The one the next morning, I was the one who turned on the light. <laughs> Always. So on, the whole week long. And then uh, once in a while, middle of the night, uh, the security would walk in and just take a look. Oh, this light is still there. Oh, are you all right? Are you still alive or something? I mean, it was a time of great change at Porsche, wasn't it? You told me previously it was dark days at the company, for example. What hardship did you guys face in the design studio? A hardship, but uh, if you ask me, I would, I would, I would say, hey, I would, I would, uh, I would have done it again. I would have done it again if I had the chance. Uh, the hardship and it, it got, you know, really the best out of everybody. But I had a very good support from my team and then a very, very strong support from Han. I have to really compliment him. Although he's, he's, you know, he, he was like me from the old school, but I managed to make a jump from the old school kind of design process to the, to the uh, digital process. And he was just kind of watching me, you know, on the sideline, but giving me enough support, uh, never dared to stop me. And that's how we get there. I don't know whether you know the story. It was the day started with the day of the 996 Turbo project. He was very supportive uh, when I started that digital process uh, in design 
on in designing a 911 digital computer, um, nobody really recognized, oh, it's done by a computer. Um, uh, Han was very supportive all from the beginning. He, he has a little bit of doubt and a little bit of uh, nervous in the beginning when I was working on the 996 uh, Turbo, and then he told me, hey, Pinky, what is going on? Nothing is happening outside on the uh, uh, with the modeling team, and you are all alone in this computer room, and day and night, and so on and so on. And then I looked back to him, I said, hey, Ham, tell me to stop now, stop me now, because we still have, uh, have time to switch back to conventional uh, design process. We still have, uh, in, we are still in good timing. But uh, in a couple of days, I'm not going to let anybody shake, shake my bow, rock my boat, uh, because I'm going to uh, go full speed with the, with the digital process. It was my very first project in, in digital. And he was done and then looked at me a few seconds and said, okay, go ahead, go ahead, keep on. <laughs> and so that's, that's, our, that's our venture uh, uh, um, with, uh, with, you know, uh, digital data, CN, CNC model, full-size clay model, and push the naked model out to the first board meeting, first presentation. But the first thing I said to the board member, I said, hey, uh, listen, gentlemen, this is, this is the, the pioneering uh, experience in, uh, in design studio because the whole model is cut CNC. All digital data is not hand built, it's all computerized. And then everybody was quiet, so we have a little rock around the, the clay model and then, okay, continue, you know. Because it's, uh, you know, the first model modeling show is normally is decorated with dynog and everything, you know, uh, window graphic, and et cetera. But I just shown them a, uh, a, a CNC milled uh, um, a clay model, naked, no decoration, but you just see the proportion, roughly the, the, the shape language, more or less. It's, look, it's like you were you, you, you are looking at uh, more a sculpture, full size car sculpture, rather than, you know, a decorated car design model yeah so it was encouraging for me but from then on it just took off you know the journey with digital modeling uh, you'll be aware of michael mauer the current um head of porsche style of course we uh we, we work uh, we work on a few projects he um has an interesting job because in in heading up the 911 design he has to keep the same philosophy of that car but evolve it for every generation um which I would say is a difficult job, but I would say by the same token, your job was even harder because you had this platform, you know, I've got a 911 here, you had this 911 that everybody knew the shape of, and you had to go and change it. I don't see any direct comparison uh, apart from, you know, the, uh, maybe the team is still called the 911 uh, um, project management team. Yeah. I think they are still, um, operating under the same uh, system you know every every model line is one project team uh, you can call it platform but normally the official work is project management every uh, model line the nine uh, the, the 911 the boxster and then the cayman uh, cayenne mccann they are all separate uh, project management team uh, i guess that is the only thing remain the same but but the rest i i cannot compare because uh, the 996, it was the beginning of the so-called management, uh, project management system of operation. Uh, it was a very small team. And through, through the ages, you know, teams getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We were, we were a handful of people, you know, <laughs> I had, including engineering and suspension and course people. Uh, really handful. You can count your whole, whole team. Uh, but we, whenever we have a team meeting, any room will fit us in but nowadays you really need a huge room to you know you, you can hardly remember all the names of the team member uh nowadays uh at our time we were we we, we were really still uh, operating under under a very very i would call it more efficient you know everything is direct communication there's no chain of command kind of operation 
But nowadays, I don't think it operates that way. You have to go through the chain of command. There's a lot of scanning and then feedback to the digital model. But in my, in my, uh, in my uh, experience, uh, that is not digital process. That is, a, uh, you know, is a, a data back and forth kind of a process. But my period, my way of uh, a digital process is uh, data downstream. Sort of all the changes, all the modification, all come from the uh, computer. You do all your change in, in the, in, in the digital, on the digital model, and then you will you know, send out your digital data to the clay model. Yeah. And that's what I call data downstream. The only area where we have a scan back into the digital uh, model was uh, it was on uh, an urgent case that um, aer about aerodynamic. Uh, it was a, a fight between aerodynamics and thermodynamics. Uh, the corner of the the, bump, the front corner bumper of the 996 turbo, and at the end uh, we thought we got to optimize aerodynamic body that we achieved the lap time, but the thermodynamic called up a meeting. He said, hey, it's heating up the, the engine cooling. It's not enough. We need to open up even more the, 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 the in air intake on the outer corner of the bumper. So you might, you might notice one, uh, when, if you have a chance to look at the uh, 996 turbo at the front corner bumper area, and it's it really sticking out that corner the yeah. designer would bigger, isn't it? On a further in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is for the thermodynamic reason, because you are given uh, uh, during the meeting, the urgent meeting, that you are given a frontal area, minimum frontal area, for the opening. So you have to add body material <laughs> to the bumper to open it up. Uh, um, it, it was an urgent because they they didn't have time. They couldn't wait another couple of days. They wanted it happen the next day, the next 24 hours. So we have to model up uh, clay, uh, clay up the corner of the clay model, you know, and then uh, quick modeling, and then open up a bit extra, you know, for the, for, the, for the air intake. And then we scan that corner and then fit into the digital model. That was the only area we have the data feedback into digital area that not data downstream, data upstream. That was yeah. the only corner. Wow. So this is something nobody nobody knew, and except my team, my models, and so on. Mm. You, um, um, you sorry, Pinky. I just um, on the the topic of aerodynamics and lap times. I've read that you had to really fight with the powers that be at Porsche to get the um, active rear wing on the nine nine six because there wasn't actually enough budget for that to happen. And your argument was, well, we need to keep. The, the sloping profile of the 911, yeah. but we need yeah. to boost the aerodynamics of the back of the car. That was a very, very critical. That was way be, before, before the turbo era. It was the, the coupe, the 996 coupe. Yeah. And I still remember one late afternoon, it was winter time. In fact, it was already dark and uh, we, had, we, had, we had a look at the, at the um, at the clay model came back from the wind tunnel and just just Ham and I were there standing at the uh, the door opening of, of the studio facing the courtyard looking at the clay model you know all taped up from uh, uh, from the wind tunnel and because we were we were desperate uh, it was desperate in a sense that hey we, we could not achieve the downforce you know if you don't have downforce then you don't have a lap time um, because we we had to keep the slooping rear end silhouette, but we were not allowed to have a high, high uh, we call it the high trailing edge. Uh, it's like if you look at uh, at that time, I compared that trailing edge, uh, the relationship as a as a five series BMW, that kind of trailing edge. Yeah, at yeah. The deck, at the trunk, at the rear end, that is the trailing edge. If you don't have that edge. You don't have downforce. Mm. If you don't have downforce, you don't have a lap time. Uh, so uh, Han was looking at me and said, "Hey, Pinky, maybe we should we should scrap scrap the model, scrap everything, 
and go back to the sort of uh, drawing board to start from, from scratch again. I said, Tom, you know, everything was fine, the whole model in terms of design. And, you know, everybody worked so hard to get, to win that program, the whole team. And just because of the downfalls. And that is the only problem we had. I said, hey, give me a couple of days, a maximum a week. Let me, let me see if I can, you know, uh, do some, something in the wind tunnel. So the next morning, we went back to the wind tunnel with, that, with, with the coop, the clay model coop, and, and run, start running uh, some funny tests, like, uh, you know, the engine cover at the rear deck. The engine cover, you have some opening for the engine cooling, yeah. engine room cooling. And then we have some black grills, and you know, in the old days, you know, I'm not talking about current, not body color grill, but in the old days, it's like an opening, and then you put in a, 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 a black grill, yeah, black louvers. Then I pick, I pick the last louver of the of the grill, and sort of uh, start uh, doubling up the size in terms of uh, the width, you know, instead of maybe one inch, uh, sort of. Uh, the size of the grill is one inch uh, yeah. wide. Yeah. I double it, and then this thing start happening. The downfall starts increasing, and then I triple it. It's like the last, the last grill is really sticking out, like a like a little bit of duck tail. It is. Yeah, it's out. just a tiny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then uh, then then the whole thing just just turn into a, 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 a really optimistic uh, uh, in uh, in terms of uh, down downfall. So I call up the, uh, the head of the project management. We, we call him the bean counter. You know, okay, he, was, yeah. he was the one who stopped me from, you know, asking for a moving spoiler. Yes, yeah. And, but I finally, I said, hey, uh, Mr. I forgot his name. Hey, come, come to the wind tunnel. Let me show you something. So he came in and then I, I show him. I told him the whole story, the whole changes we made. And he, he said, no, no, what, what do you want me to do? And then I said, hey, that is, that is the whole thing. that uh, we, need, we need a very, uh, I was just saying, we need a very, very, a very smart, uh, but very primitive kind of moving grill. Just, <laughs> that grill basically in the, in the parking position is not sticking out. It's only in the high speed that that grill would move out. And then he said, well, uh, let's, let, let me ask the guy, you know, the costing guy to calculate how much would that cost, you know, just by moving that grill. Today we continue working and then finally we got an optimum, optimum location for that trailing edge to get the really the best downfalls. Now, of course, it ended up way far beyond that, you know, that, that dimension is, you know, it's like going from there. It go to there, you know, that would be the, so at the end, we need, we need the whole moving grill, the whole grill move up and down, yeah, and, but I said, hey, it's the same cost, you know, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't cost you a lot extra, you know, just by moving the whole, whole, whole grill panel, or just by moving one grill, it's the same price, so we were in business again, that's what, that's how it happened. Yeah, and, and uh, likewise, because how it came around again, from my understanding, is you were split into teams, weren't you, at Porsche, and you were all tasked with designing your vision of the 996 program, and it was you and your team that, that won, wasn't it? So you took your vision of the 996 forward? My direction, or my uh, design theme, was one of the four uh, uh, full-size models, four yeah. different design proposals. And basically, we were four teams competing. And uh, after, I think, three, three four months of uh, full-size model development, uh, how many shows, I don't remember. And uh, the final show, sort of the, 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 the board members have to pick the model. That was the day, you know, after all, the, all the board members have to hold an hold umbrella because it was really pouring to look at all this, you know, full-size model all decorated, you know, looks like real model from a distance. Four different, different proposals, full size 911 proposal. They picked us. So the main uh, reason why they picked us was uh, we, were, we were the most progressive, sort of the maximum bang for the, for the buck. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, all the others, they were just, you know, too, too, too much similarity to the previous model, yeah. like circular headlamp and then a uh, very sort of horizontal kind of tail lamp and all this. And mine, mine was uh, more, more sculptural and more, more, I, I would, I would say more revolutionary, sort of out of the ordinary 9-11 thinking. The car had to, um, had to be feasible with production of a sister car, i.e. the 986 Boxster. You knew that the engine was switching to water cooling because development of the air-cooled engine yeah. had reached its peak. Yeah. And I assume, did you know about the fact that Porsche was changing its manufacturing techniques and bringing in some more influence from Japanese automakers with regards to the production line and the efficiencies there? Because, for example, I know the 996 headlight, the whole beauty of that is a one-piece item. It could be fitted to the car in, in seconds, yeah. wasn't it? Whereas before, yeah. it was much longer. Yeah. During the design program of the 986 and 996, uh, we were aware that there were some consultants from uh, uh, some, some Japanese consultancy company uh, involved in the, in the... But it was more a financial process. Um, they were not involved in the technical process. Sort of the technical development, they have, I don't think they have any, any, any uh, share. They were more in the, how, how we store, store the spare parts and sort of online, online manufacturing. And uh, they have a work for it. I think they call it the Kansai or something. Um, it's all about, you know, uh, eliminating the storage area for yes. the production. Yeah. Sort of always on time delivery, on time manufacturing. Um, but in terms of the package layout of the technical uh, engineering, they, they don't have any, any, any say in that because, you know, it was still in the early stage. Everything is still in the, on the drawing board and then they don't really have anything to say about it. Okay, yeah, so your, your design was picked purely because it was so revolutionary and, and Porsche knew that... Um, the 911 needed to go in a new direction at that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, that is all, it's all really interesting stuff, this. People just haven't heard this before, you know, so we, we really appreciate you sharing this. Um, the 996 Turbo that came along in 2000 obviously had a, a revised front end with regards to the headlights. Uh, what was the reason behind that? Initially, we were pretty happy with the 996 uh, coupe headlight. There were no discussion about fry eggs and this and that. It, it initiated outside the design department, definitely. Yeah. Because the headlight, the headlight design, it was more an open competition. While we were already working on the 996 uh, coupe, and we were looking at uh, variation instead of circular or elliptical. Are there any uh, alternative? And including revolutionary kind of geometry. So we ended up with a, a new shape, uh, like 996 uh, cool. And everybody was happy about it because it, it's not only about styling, it's also cause reason. There is a very heavy cost reason, right? Because this all thing is one module. It's like, it's like uh, less than 10 minute assembly compared to the old uh, system, you know, the uh, 993 or yes. 94. You know, you have, you have lamps everywhere. It's like multiply every lamp assembly by, you know, 10 minutes. So we were, we were saving money in the assembly, in the production. Uh, at the same time, we sort of really maximum bang for the buck. You know, the optic is really, you know, totally impact, uh, visual impact. Um, so we were getting used to it. We like it. And uh, I mean, in terms of studios. And then once we move into the uh, 996 Turbo, we knew, uh, we, we knew, uh, we, we are getting a new front fender for the Turbo. Uh, of course, the, the bonnet, the, the front bonnet is, is the same. It's a carryover from the coupe, but it's, it's, it's going to be a new bumper for sure. Um, so, and we were saying, hey, uh, that is another maximum bang for the buck. You know, if, if, we, if we can do a new lamp, uh, because, um, because turbo is supposed to have some differential to the, to the coupe. 
Um, so we we also suggest okay, let's 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 try let's try a different headlamp shape for uh, for for the turbo. It's, it's like it's an open exercise. Every designer, every team had the had opportunity to uh, to to tape up a shape and so on. So we pick uh, we pick uh, the one uh, what we pick uh, as the as the most feasible as also along the line of the 996 uh, uh, language. Yes. Okay. And and was that always the case that it was going to then filter out to be used on the 996 Gen 2? Coupe and Cabriolet and whatnot as well. Oh, that was that was the cost efficiency. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's very good. Yeah, because there's uh, we cannot argue. Okay, now we have uh, uh, the second series of the coupe, and let's do another new headlamp. No, no. Oh, don't forget, you know, the timing. We we didn't really have a lot of time to develop a new headlamp. You know, the second series of nine uh, nine ninety six coupe. It has to come out. It's like uh, one one year uh, yes. after the, uh, the nine ninety six turbo. I've got one more question for you, Pinky, uh, if you don't mind. So, were you worried as to the reception of the nine nine six when it was released because it was so different from any nine eleven before? Did that worry you at all? That is a very interesting question. You know, when, when, you, when you are working on a kind of standard program, uh, sort of replacement program, and without the, um, the experience of, you know, knowing the company is going to be possibly show out to Toyota or show out to Mercedes, that is a very different case scenario than a kind of standard model replacement. Uh, we were facing that problem of okay, this is your last bullet, yeah. you know, for the company. That is your your last chunk of cash to do a new car. So what do you do? You know, and, uh, you just want to get the maximum. Uh, we I think at that time we call it the maximum bang for the buck. Uh, so um, that's what we use that term uh, in the team. Um, we didn't really have any other choice because in the normal case, like currently, you know, like uh, 991 to 992, the, the changes, the visual changes is really marginal. It's really marginal. They can afford that because they have, they have enough, uh, they have enough uh, uh, numbers or, or product, uh, sales number to cover any cost disadvantage or... or it's a very different different scenario or different business case comparing to 996. We were facing the, the really, really, really huge, uh, huge change of moving from air cool to water cool. Oh, that is that is really a huge revolution. You know, more more than the optical change, you know, in a way. At least just as serious as the optical change or proportional change. You know, for all the diehard 911 up until 993, what? What a cool! What are you talking about? Are you from, <laughs> from, from Porsche or you from somewhere else? You know, no, no way. Because, but, but we get used to it very fast because we know, we know, we know where the company stood at that time. You know, so it's not. There's no argument at all. Even the diehard inside the company, the 911 group. Maybe when they turn their back from the meeting, they would start, you know, missing the 911 kind of air cool. But once official meeting, they are they are all, you know, uh, wholehearted, you know, supporting the the water cool. There's no way to get out of, you know, you have to you have to follow the sort of the, the power curve. That was the end of the power curve for air cool. They were putting up uh, the uh, the projection of the BMW engine development for the next five years, starting from the next five years, and then engine development of uh, Audi and and Mercedes. They were really, you know, uphill curve, the, the power output, and then our 911 kind of air cool is sort of sort of flattening out the curve of power output. So there's no way to to any you know all the diehard 911 guys they they all have to have to, uh, you know, quiet down and then, you know, just go along with the, with the water cool. Well, the, the 996, obviously, customers voted on their feet because 
more 996s were sold than 993s. Fascinating. Pinky, um, yeah, that is amazing. I thank you very much for your time. And, uh, hey, great talking to you. Yeah. Likewise, and we'll speak soon, no doubt, okay? Thank you. Bye. Thank you.